Hi, this is Roger from Crankerlips. Today with a little experiment, if we can utilize this SMD LCR meter, which I introduced in uh, one of the last videos, the Mastec MS8911, if we can utilize it also for measuring diodes. Now, the idea behind it is that we use the DC resistance range and let's remember or recap how a multimeter uh, measures ohms. So there's internally, there is a constant current source and this constant current, if applied to anything le that lets current flow, for example, a resistor, uh, there will be a voltage developed here and this voltage U or V, however you want it, is according to Ohm's law equal to the resistance of our device under test times the constant current that comes here from the multimeter. So we only have to measure the voltage and it's in direct proportion to our resistance and that is how modern multimeters measure ohms. But we can also reverse this principle if we once measure the constant current from the multimeter and take a look at the ohms value that is in the display, then we know which voltage is developed here over our device under test. Now, and if this device is, for example, a normal silicon diode, we should get 0.6 volt, in the range at least, depending of course on the value of the constant current. If it's a Schottky diode, it should, or a germanium diode, it should be in the range of 0.3 volts. And if it's an LED, as long as the battery voltage here that supplies the constant current source is at least that large that the LED lights up, then we get the forward voltage uh, of our LED. Oops, <laughs> again, sorry. So that's how it should look. A normal silicon diode, a shot key, and an LED. Um, so the only thing we have to know is what amount of constant current is uh, generated here inside the multimeter. And therefore, um, let's just turn this thing on. Go to DC resistance mode. So here we are. And let's turn our multimeter on in current measurement mode. And on the one side, we, th we see that the shunt resistor at the moment in the microamps range is 107.3 ohms. And here we can read the constant current is around 2.2 milliamps in our case. So if we change the range, for example, to the milliamps range, uh, we only have 7.2. 2.5 ohms as shunt resistor here internally and now we get 3.7 milliamps. So apparently the constant current is not really a fixed value but it's in the range between 2 and 3 uh, milliamps and when we measure diodes we expect something more in the range of uh, that we have here. Uh, so let's suppose we have something in the range of 2 milliamps and now let's simply try to measure uh, what ohms values do we get displayed with uh, the different types of uh, diodes and does this give a meaningful display or hint what kind of diode uh, there is inside that we are measuring our unknown device under test and if, if the diode is working or blown up. So if our assumption is correct then the forward voltage of our diode under test is simply the display resistance times 2 milliamps or in other words the forward voltage in millivolts is two times the displayed resistance in ohms. 
Now let's try this out first with a Schottky diode and the auto ranging takes a little time. So we get a displayed value of nearly 200 ohms. That would give 400 millivolts. Now Schottky diodes usually have only 300 millivolts forward voltage at such low currents. But here we can see uh, the measurement current is lower than our 2 milliamps that we just had. So let's try as the next thing a silicon diode. And apparently here we get 3.23 kilo ohms and a still lower constant current of only 150 microamps. So I suspect that this thing doesn't have a constant current generator but does an internal calculation. They probably only take the battery voltage, a single series resistor, and then they recalculate the DC resistance uh, <laughs> just that way, not with the classical way. So let's try as the next thing a green LED. And this doesn't light up at all and the current is zero. So apparently the measurement voltage here is a maximum of uh, half a volt or one volt so that we can't measure any LEDs. So this is a little bit of a fail. I would have expected something better. But anyway, Schottky diodes measure reasonably well with a DC resistance of 200 ohms or in other words if we take into account the 1.6 milliamps and we multiply this 200 ohms with 1.6 we in fact get 300 millivolts so taking into account the different currents and this is even correct but a silicon diode is really the maximum we can measure uh, with 3.3 kilo ohms and so at least with a little bit of guessing we can identify working and non-working diodes. So a blown diode would present a short usually, not an open circuit. It only develops an open circuit behavior if the internal bond wires have evapor evaporated uh, by too heavy current. Before that happens that would give a short. And a short, of course, can not only be identified by its low resistance, but also that when we measure it, the diode in reverse, we would get the same value. And for a working diode, we would get an infinite value. So if in one direction we measure something, like here, 3.3 kilo ohms, and in the reverse, or in the other di direction, we measure overload or infinite resistance, then we can be pretty sure that the diode is working. And with Schottky diodes, the result is a little better. We get a reasonable good result. And in reverse, it should measure, well, we get 18 mega ohms. Um, that is because Schottky diodes, diodes have quite a high leakage current, only to be surpassed by germanium diodes. Also something I don't like if you can't turn off the auto power off function. Saves you a battery life, but it always happens in the least desirable moment. So that was it with something of a failed idea to measure diodes with an LCR meter or with this LCR meter with its low measurement voltage and unconventional way to measure DC resistance, apparently not with a constant current source, but with a more simpler way which involves uh, just a little bit of internal math to get the right value. Ah, so interesting result for me. I didn't know what, what came out before. Anyway, if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. And that was it for today. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanker Labs.